Good afternoon. At this time, will all sergeants please start their recordings? Recording to the PC is good. Thank you. Cloud recording all set. Thank you. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Sergeant Sandowski, with your opening statement, please. Yes. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Technology. At this time, would all council members and council staff please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.myc.gov. Once again, that is testimony at council.myc.gov. Thank you, Chair Holden. We are ready to begin. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Council Member Holden, Chair of the Committee on Technology. I want to welcome you all to our hearing on the day before the snowstorm, hopefully a small storm. <laughs> Today, we will focus on the advantages and disadvantages of cloud computing systems and how the city can best utilize and interact with this technology. Uh, the committee will also hear pre-considered intro that's not numbered yet in relation to the assessment of the feasibility of storing uh, city agencies' electronic data on cloud computing systems. Uh, the committee expects to receive testimony from the Department of Informational Technology or Information Technology and Telecommunications uh, groups, advocacy groups, uh, industry experts, and other interested members of the public. A reoccurring theme that is becoming more evident is how society and its interactions are moving, of course, online. Uh, this transition has been happening for a while, uh, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it has kicked into high gear. Uh, cloud computing is one of these transitional elements. According to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, cloud computing is a model for providing on-demand network access to a shared pool of computing resources. In other words, it is the delivery of computing services like software, analytics, databases, and more over the internet. With working from home now, the norm, cloud computing is seeing an increased adoption to provide a, a more streamlined and efficient online experience for companies and governments alike. But even before the pandemic social distancing norms, the cloud computing model saw increased adoption due to the increased ID agility and higher operating speeds than conventional data centers and digital operations. For example, while conventional on-site data centers would require upkeep costs like supplying power, maintaining physical space, and spending time managing that, that data center, the cloud computing model foregoes those costs uh, by having a separate entity provided, uh, provide the IT resources online. Although there are many benefits, there are also issues that must be acknowledged. For one, cloud computing models cannot just simply replace pre-existing legacy systems and absorb data. Uh, migrating data to the cloud is an expensive and arduous undertaking uh, a necess undertaking necessary for the system to function. Additionally, beyond operation uh, concerns, like how a cloud computing provider will manage the data, there are also security concerns. Um, on the most basic level, migrating data to the cloud provider's system means relinquishing some control over that data. Uh, there are also general risks that stem from uh, our new digital age, like hacking concerns and data breaches. While cloud computing models promise substantial advantages, there are, must also be weighed in conjunction with their risk to the city and its residents. So we have to weigh it. Uh, I hope that today's discussion will clarify both pros and cons of cloud computing systems and take a closer look at how New York City can be a leader in technology. Uh, we wish to work together with the administration on this cr uh, critical issue and look forward to hearing the valuable testimonies from the administration experts and advocates. Um, the following bill will also be considered today, pre, uh, pre-considered intro sponsored by uh, council member Paul Ballone uh, in relation to the assessment and of the feasibility of storing city agencies electronic data 
on cloud computing. I want to thank the Technology Committee staff, Council Irene Bohatsky, Pol uh, Policy Analyst Charles Kim, and Finance Analyst Florentine Kabor uh, for their hard work in, prep in preparing for this uh, hearing. I also, also I want to thank my Chief of Staff, Daniel Cusina, and my Communications and Legislative Director, Kevin Ryan. Um, I see some of my colleagues. Uh, Councilman Yeager is here. Um, Councilman uh, Ballone, Councilmember Lander. Uh, I think we did. We get everybody. I think we did. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, I now invite my good friend and and Queens colleague. Councilmember Paul Ballone, the sponsor of, of the bill we are hearing today to provide an opening statement. Councilmember Ballone. Thank you, Chair Holden. Oh, one second, one second. We have Councilmember Ulrich, uh, I see, has just joined us. And Nick Costa Constantinidis is waving at us. Oh, okay. There he is. <laughs> Thank you. So, Costa. All right. Thank you, Chair Holden. Um, yes, you timed the hearing perfectly right before, hopefully, small winter storm. Um, we are hearing today a pre-considered bill to help New York and bring New York to city's technological infrastructure into the 21st century and beyond. We are looking into transitioning our data and our applications to the cloud, which would be our first step in creating a dynamic and cutting edge platform for a city to build on that is affordable and secure and is probably overdue. We must have a strong technological foundation that we can rely on at a moment's notice to ensure that we can continue our work through any emergency. Cloud storage would also allow our city agencies to store and share data more easily, creating a more transparent environment in our government. Having access to this data and to the incredible powerful tools most cloud computing companies offer would allow us to identify the problems more easily and investigate solutions through a data-driven approach. I'd like to thank Speaker Johnson and Chair Holden for allowing us uh, to hear the bill today and create a comprehensive report on transitioning our systems to the cloud, which will be heard today. Once again, we must find ways to ensure the integrity of our technological infrastructure and ways to utilize all of the data in our city's care to create meaningful data-driven policy changes. Um, I look forward to today's hearing, our testimony. Look forward to our fellow council members to join on to this. And um, it wasn't too long ago when council members were being told that files were being walked from one side of an agency to another. So to get to this point where we can computerize, digitize, and protect that information and stream it to the cloud, uh, it's a good day. So thank you, Chair Holden. Thank you, Councilmember Ballone. I will now turn it over to our moderator, Committee Council Irene Bohofsky, to go over some procedural items uh, for this hearing. Thank you, Chair Holden. I'm Irene Bohofsky. I am the Council to the Committee on Technology, and I will be moderating this hearing. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you're called on to testify, at which point you will be unmuted by the host. Please be aware that there could be a delay in muting and unmuting, so please be patient. I will, call, I will be calling on panelists to testify. Please listen for your name to be called as I announce the panelists. We will first be hearing testimony from the administration, followed by testimony from members of the public. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask questions of the administration or a specific panelists, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you. We will be limiting council members questions to five minutes, which includes the time it takes to answer the questions. Also, please note that all panelists aside from the administration will be limited to five minute timer so that we might accommodate all who has registered to testify. When you will call to testify, please state your name and organization you represent for the record. We will now call representative of the administration to testify. I will be, we will be hearing from 
Jessica Tisch, Commissioner of the Department of Information, Technology and Telecommunications. Stephen Basman, Deputy Commissioner, and Joseph Learman, Deputy Commissioner of Information Security and Chief Information Security Officer, will also be available for Q&A. At this time, I will administer the affirmation to each representative. I will call on each of you individually for a response. Please raise your right hands. Commissioner Tisch, Deputy Commissioner Basman, Deputy Commissioner Learman, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions. Commissioner Tisch? I do. Deputy Commissioner Basman? I do. Deputy Commissioner Learman? I do. Thank you. I now invite Commissioner Tisch to present her testimony. Commissioner Tisch, you might begin when you're ready. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Holden and members of the Committee on Technology. My name is Jessica Tisch, and I am the Commissioner of the New York City Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications and the Citywide Chief Information Officer. I am joined today by Yosef Lorman, DUIT's Deputy Commissioner for Information Security and Chief Information Security Officer, and Stephen Besman, DUIT's Deputy Commissioner for Applications. I am pleased to join you today to join you at today's oversight hearing on cloud computing systems and to discuss pre-considered legislation that would require DOIT to conduct an assessment and report on the feasibility of transferring city agencies' electronic data to the cloud. The city has been leveraging cloud solutions for nearly a decade. The city also has a robust citywide policy on cloud that all agencies are subject to. The agencies have hundreds, if not thousands of applications running in the cloud already. As part of the city's COVID-19 response efforts, for example, we built dozens of applications and every single one of them ran in the cloud. In fact, I'd be hard pressed to come up with a new application that we are developing that isn't run in the cloud today beyond the city's uh, next gen 911 system. And this is a good thing. Because frankly, the city's data centers um, can't support the rate of development required to meet the city's needs. As security goes, there are different flavors of cloud solutions and different levers on the tech and policy side that can be pulled. For example, FedRAMP, GovCloud, encryption and transit and at rest, encryption keys. Point is, it's a mistake to paint the security implications of cloud use with a broad brush. Some solutions are quite secure and others are quite insecure. Same is true for data privacy. Per the city's policy, each cloud solution and its associated security and data privacy controls must align with the type of data it is collecting. For example, is it collecting HIPAA data, personally identifiable information, or is it just a survey with no personally identifiable information? I will now turn to the legislation we are considering today. The proposed pre-considered legislation would require DOIT to conduct assessment of the feasibility of transferring city agencies' electronic data to the cloud. The department would also be required to submit a report of the results of the assessment to the council. While we appreciate and share the council's interest in cloud-based computing, because the city's use of cloud is well underway and has been for nearly a decade, conducting a feasibility study at this time would not be an efficient or productive use of city resources. I am looking forward to hearing more from the council today on your goals for this bill and to continue discussing this piece of legislation. Thank you for the opportunity to give testimony on the proposal. With that, I am happy to take the council's questions. Thank you, Commissioner Tisch. I will now turn over 
to questions for the chair. Panelists, please stay unmuted if possible during this question and answer period. Thank you. Chair Holden, you might begin the questions. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for your testimony and thank you for your great work. Um, uh, I just have a few questions and I'll, then I'll turn it over to my, some of my colleagues. Um, how many physical data centers does the city currently have? Oh God, um, I can say, I don't know how many the city has because some agencies have their own data centers. Um, at Do It, we have, let's say, three main, three data centers. So, uh, but isn't Do It building a new data center in Brooklyn? No. No? No. Okay. Well, all right. This is what we heard, but all right, maybe we'll check on that. Um, does the city own the real estate where these data centers are located? Um, no, the city leases the real estate. Yeah, so we, you know, this is this is what I, you know, the part of this, this hearing is to look at, you know, is this cost effective? Um, you know, because, you know, we if we're leasing them, how much is the, the rent, you know, utility and other costs, as opposed to sort of phasing some of them out if we can, like, um, you know, um, you know, when does the lease or, or agreement expire? Um, can we give up? Like, I mean, some of the questions we have to look at is can we, and I guess you're working on it, but I, I just have to ask it, you know, can we give up some data centers like um, systematically, you know, year by year, work some of them out to save, save money? Well, so let's discuss the premise of that. Um, I am someone who throughout my career as a CIO in New York City, so that's dating back to 2014, has aggressively pushed um, toward the cloud. So that started in my work at the NYPD, where NYPD really took um, a leadership position in this area and was one of the first agencies in the city of New York to start leveraging cloud-based solutions, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, um, and the like. Um, what I will say is, yes, leases are expensive, but it's not perfectly obvious to me that um, cloud, full cloud solutions at this time either can replace all of our physical data centers in the near to midterm, um, or that given current pricing, it would be cost effective to do so at this time. So do, do you know, do we have any, uh, maybe we can get it, uh, the numbers, but if, um, you know, the approximate cost of maintenance on the city's uh, current uh, data centers, you know, and how does this cost break down? Um, you know, what, what's the, how does this uh, approximate cost change with uh, an expansion um, or, or, you know, if we eliminate, so we need to, we need to look at the numbers of, you know, the versus the cloud versus these data centers. Um, and, and also the benefits of moving data to the cloud. So, you know, is there anybody, are you doing that? Are you assessing the costs uh, of having these data centers and um, transferring data from them? Um, I can't speak right now, but can definitely follow up with your office on the leasing costs for the data center. You know, I misspoke and would like to correct one thing. I believe that the city actually owns one of the data centers um, that we leverage, and that is the data center that is um, a part of our PSAC2, that's our 911 public safety answering system uh, center up in the Bronx. There is a data center there and the city does um, own that space. Um, but I can get you the costs associated with the leases. Um, in terms of 
our, the affordability of moving data to the cloud. When I said that I didn't think that it made, that we would be able to move fully to the cloud in the near to midterm, and one of the factors I stated was cost. I believe that that will change over time and that that will be based on um, bulk discounts that the cloud providers um, could offer us. So if we really leverage the city's buying power and say, all right, if we put X percent of our data or X amount of our data in um, this cloud, um, can we get a 40% discount on the rates? Um, so a lot of the affordability question is associated with the discounts that the city is working to secure. Yeah, on that, um, the, are the, city, the city agencies are, uh, what we heard, the city agencies are, you know, contracting their own deals with cloud uh, com uh, companies, obviously, uh, cloud computing. Um, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be better to get um, all the agencies together and bundle it and get a, get a big discount? I mean, that, that's how it works, right? So I am indeed a big fan of leveraging the city's buying power and getting just what I said and what you said is bulk discounts. And um, we are working now to put master services agreements in place where we, the city would really see those bulk discounts. Um, I've been working on a few of those, not just in the area of cloud computing, um, but in other areas, mobile telecom, other things. And that has been um, a big area of focus for me over the past year that I've held this job. So, but, but right, right now though, all the agencies are doing their own deals. So ha have, have you making any, any headway with trying to solve that and, um, and you know, just to bundle it, like I said, you know, so how, how many agencies are on board with you so far in doing so, that? So I can't get um, agencies on board until I have the agreements in place. So let me give you an example. We're working on a master services agreement, or sorry, um, an enterprise license agreement with Microsoft now. I need that agreement to be registered and I'm hoping that that will be done by the end of the year before I can offer agencies the bulk discount that really makes um, that type of policy um, beneficial. But it's definitely, uh, Chair Holden, to respond directly to your question, something that we're really looking to press hard on over the next year as these um, agreements are coming into place. All right, just to go back to um, the, uh, the leases on data centers, uh, can, do you know how long some of these leases are? Are we locked in you know, for five years, 10 years, 20 years? Um, I don't have in front of me now the expiration date on um, many of these, on any of these leases, but I can get that information to you. Um, what I do know is that they are at least five years um, away. And the reason that I know that or strongly believe that is because um, if the data center lease uh, expires in less than five years, then the equipment that we put in them is not capitally eligible. Um, so I know based on my work procuring equipment that all of the leases have at least five years left on their terms. At a previous hearing, the technology uh, hearing, you, you mentioned that you thought that we had a good balance between the data centers and cloud uh, and the cloud. Do you, do you still feel that, that we're, we're, you know, you said the new, obviously the new uh, information and new software is all on the cloud now, the latest. Um, but do you feel that there's a good balance um, 
in, in New York City at this point? You know me, I love to modernize. And um, what we are working on like <laughs> all day, every day is getting rid of legacy applications and replacing them with new applications. Over the past year, as I stated in my testimony, all of the new application development that I have overseen at Do It has been cloud-based. And so what I think the, what I know the strategy to be is to replace legacy on-prem systems with modern cloud-based systems. And so you will naturally see over time um, progress in that area as we decommission legacy, it goes out of the data center and we build new in its place. I can't just snap my fingers, I wish I could, <laughs> snap my fingers and turn off all of the legacy systems. Um, but what I can say is that this, this is the strategy and this is the way of the future. Now, I wanna clarify one thing. I cannot, replace 100% of the city's systems with cloud-based solutions. So as I think I said in my testimony, uh, the 911 system, I don't envision, at least as long as I'm here, putting that system in the cloud. Why is that not a good candidate? So for me, it's not a good candidate um, because I need that 911 system to be available all the time. And so if there's an internet outage, if a cloud provider has a platform problem, I can't risk not being able to take that 911 call. So there are certain systems and it's quite limited, um, but there are certain systems that in my thinking do not belong today in the cloud and I don't see a, um, a near or midterm path to moving them to the cloud. Um, but again, those are few and far between. All right, just a few more questions, then I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Paul Ballone. Uh, what percentage of the city's data is cloud ready as of this hearing date? Do you have an estimate? I don't. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can tell you, though, that all of Doit's new development is cloud-based. So I'll just give you some examples because it may help, right? Um, the GIS system, um, the subpoena system, um, data platform, portions of the data platform. Like these are massive systems that would many of them support and touch and affect so many different agencies. And these are all places where we've set the strategic direction to move to the cloud. Okay, let, uh, let me just, uh, one or two more questions and then I'll turn it over. Let's talk about the legacy systems in the city. Um, if you were to estimate um, what percentage of the systems that the city owns and operates are legacy systems? fewer today than yesterday or last year but is it 40 percent is it 30 I oh no know. it's it's definitely higher than that but higher you have to that. you have to remember um chair and, and council members um these systems have been built over decades and so there are so many of them um and uh, I wouldn't be able even to begin to estimate it other than to say that we are focused on picking off legacy system by legacy system and modernizing and upgrading. And um, in my budget, that's what we're spending our money on. I like to put my money where my mouth is. Um, and we're modernizing everything. So I'll give you a great example. Um, city's email. Uh, we now have every agency, I think, except for one uh, 
which should happen soon on cloud-based email, on Office 365. And by the way, I'm desperate for the council to move to Office 365. <laughs> um, but this would be um, just, just that progress over the past year when you had more than 75% of city agencies on, you know, on-prem email, that, that I think is a really good example of the citywide progress that we are making as part of our modernization efforts. That's what I'm here to do, modernize. So would you agree that the uh, legacy systems are not cloud ready uh, and it would be, would be challenging and almost impossible to move them to the cloud? Oh yeah, I mean, we, we may have to migrate data, but we would, we're, the, the approach is to build new, new systems in the cloud. But do you, have, I know, but do you have trained personnel to facilitate the data moving process? If you know, you have to move some data, obviously. Oh uh, yes, we have a whole cloud team. We have a whole team of people who are focused on that. So you wouldn't have to hire a new staff or contractors to carry out the data moving. It depends how quickly you want to get it done, right? It depends, you know. You like to do things quickly, ways. right? Do you... <laughs> but the people, the people are not the only factor. The number of people are not the only factor, right? It's about um, budget to build new systems. It's about working hand in hand with the agencies, some of whom can't have any disruption or downtime um, in the transition. There are so many factors that go into it. It's so easy. It's my favorite thing to do is to build a net new system, meaning Greenfield, it's not something the agency ever used before. It's not something they rely on um, to do their business. So to build a brand new system in the cloud is much more straightforward than to um, replace an existing system with a cloud-based system. Okay, on that note, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Paul Ballone, for some questions on his legislation. Thank you, Chair Holden. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good to see you again. Great to see you. So it sounds like we're saying the same thing. I hope so. Well, but we are and we aren't because you didn't support uh, in the opening testimony the bill that Councilmember Richie Torres and I first put in and soon to be Congress member. The point of it is to really get you on the path to the transition. But as Chair Holden just mentioned, we have antiquated legacy systems. We have some that you're hoping to transition quickly. And then we have a future idea or plan to hopefully get everything at some point more streamlined with the, I guess the exception of, oh, guys, anytime I get a delivery, I have my little one who thinks, <laughs> uh, hang on one second. Okay, there we go. Um, which systems wouldn't be safe to do? Also, you mentioned 911. So for me, having a comprehensive plan that outlines what infrastructure can quickly and readily be transitioned versus the ones that are more difficult as legacy projects that may take more time. Um, assessing where our data is currently stored and the cost of that versus transitioning to a cloud-based system, which any small business or large business would tell you it is, it is cheaper than operating the software and the hardware of storage data versus cloud storage. Um, I just wanted to get some clarification. Wouldn't we want to assist you and get that process moving? The bill is requiring a, a year long study, which you're already doing to prepare for that transition, which sounds like obviously your future vision wants to get there anyway. So why wouldn't we want to do that? So, um, the transition is underway and the commitment is made. And the policy um, that the city has around it, as I mentioned in my testimony, I think um, 
is robust. So maybe I could go into that a little bit um, for you to give some of that background. Back in 2016, I believe, the city put in place a citywide policy on cloud, which sets um, not only the general principles on what and how um, we would transition to the cloud, it goes into all different types of ways that the city could and would leverage the cloud. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, um, identity as, as a service. Um, we are firing on all cylinders on all four of those. The other thing that the policy does is it sets out the rules of the road for each agency and says, as you're looking to develop new solutions in the cloud, this is the review that's required. These are the standards um, that you have to meet. And so that process is very much in place. Like to give you a sense of the numbers, um, last year, calendar year 2019, my agency along with Cyber Command did 149 of them. Um, this year so far, we've done 175 of them. I think my reaction to um, the proposed legislation was in like the assessment nature of it. So I feel like we're, we're past that. Um, we um, have done- be, a, So what would be the next step? Work. I hate doing anything that is is not going to be time worthy for anyone. I don't want to create yeah. anything. But if we can tweak the bill, that's what the hearing's all about. And Chair Holden's been talking about that and the other council members. We're, we're, most of us are coming down to the end of term and you have the end of the administration. I do not want to hand off to the next crew that's coming in a system that's not already has an infrastructure plan in place to transition. I, I'm a big proponent of time limits for agencies. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. Maybe we should change it that the, the agencies must respond within a certain time as to what can be transitioned, what can be trans can't be transitioned, and how best to allow, do it to get that done quickly. So if you're having conversations with Microsoft, wouldn't it be better to negotiate those licenses with knowledge of the amount of information that's going to be transferred? I'm sure they would be salivating to get that contract if they knew that 25 of the agencies were going to be transitioning as opposed to maybe just parks or two, two agencies. OK, um, so. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's a lot in there, but we want to, I want to work with you to make it happen. I don't want, I don't want to create more layers of things to do. So here's the thing. If I came here today and, and testified that no council member of alone, I'm going to double down on data centers. I want to continue to build everything on prem. I don't want to build anything in the cloud. Then fine. Like, push me to do an assessment, of course. What, what I came here today to say is um, that I share your vision for what the future of New York City's um, technology um, should look like. I share your interest in modernizing I've really led the charge in that area at the agency that I previously worked at at the NYPD. And that's what I came to do it to do on a much larger scale. Um, so um, the, the other point that I wanted to address was on deadlines. And there is no one that I know who likes to drop the hammer or set a deadline more than me. Um, and uh, if I set a deadline and you don't miss it, like you'll be hard pressed to get me to back, back away from it. Um, and that's because I feel real urgency around this stuff. I want to modernize. Um, the reason that I don't set a blanket deadline for each agency is because 
first, two reasons. First, I want it done once and I want it done right. And second, I can't sacrifice the security and privacy concerns and getting those done, those factors uh, deeply thought through for progress and speed. And so, as I was mentioning, as part of our review process, when any agency wants to move uh, into the cloud, we have an approval process where Do It and Cyber Command work together to um, review the use of the cloud and or the proposed use of the cloud and to make sure that the security protocols are in place that are commensurate with the type of data that is proposed to be collected or stored. So it's not one size fits all. And then once the agency, once they get that initial approval, so think of that as like the gating, can we do this, yes or no? Once the agency has built the system, there's yet another software security assurance review where we do or cyber command does pen tests and the like to assess, did they actually meet these standards before the system goes live? That's not so something I can do. There's a series of phases and I, and I appreciate that. And I, cause it's cause it's not, I wanna turn it back over to the chair and the other council members. So, but it sounds like what you just elicited for us is the comprehensive plan. And that's basically what we're asking to see and have because as your vision is, we have to set that groundwork as council members down in writing to see it to get done because we don't know who's gonna follow in anybody's shoes and we don't wanna reinvent the wheel. So getting the process done in a plan that can be transitioned so that we can give the right amount of resources. I mean, we really don't have the data today from the agency on telling us what the cost would be, how many agencies would be on board, what the costs are of maintaining the current storage versus using cloud storage. All the things to make the definitive decisions on are really just based on, we know you wanna do it, we know you wanna get it done, but that's not enough. We have to see the plan and move forward. So I would just say, and I'm gonna turn it back over to the, to the chair. The reason why we're having the hearing is because everyone's on board to make that happen, to get the tools to make it happen, have a plan set forth for the future to have that happen, let the advocates who are on board today to help us to see which ones can be done and through your guidance to get it done. So we're not trying to, to hinder it, we're trying to help. Thank you, Chair, for giving me some time today. Thank you, Council Member Vallone. Are uh, there any questions from my colleagues? Council Member, I do not see anyone else wishing to ask questions. And I wanna ask if you have any additional questions to the panelists. I, I, I can ask some questions if my colleagues don't. Uh, I have a few more, uh, Commissioner. Um, what cloud providers are these agencies uh, that you mentioned that they're, they're making their own contracts with? Um, wh what are some of the, the, the uh, providers that are, have contracted with the city, the cloud providers? Oh, geez. I mean, is it a long <laughs> name? It, we probably work with them. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, we leverage Office 365 with Microsoft. We leverage Dynamics with Microsoft. We use AWS. We use Google Cloud. Uh, in terms of platforms, uh, we work with Salesforce. We said Dynamics already. Uh, we did a lot of COVID related work uh, with Uncork. I mean, dozens and dozens of companies. I, I want to just correct one thing. I, I may have given you the wrong impression on something. Do it holds many citywide contracts and can contract for other agencies. So some agencies have their own contracts, but we are trying to consolidate that. Um, as I explained, to leverage the city's buying power and to do it. So uh, what's your experience in working with uh, the, uh, the cloud providers? Well, I mean, like anything else, it, it depends which one. All, you know, companies are different. And I think uh, there are so many that offer 
great products and have been great partners to us. But generally, are you pleased? Are you like, if you had to just kind of summarize it, um, your experiences have been okay, you know, great. Well, I mean, I don't think I would be um, here telling you that my plan is to move so much of what the city of New York does in the cloud if I didn't um, have experience working with some really uh, good partners. Okay, all right. Um, other than the 911 system, which you won't move to the cloud, um, what data, what other data should not be moved, let's say, to the cloud? Um, I think that the decisions around that um, would really focus on how, um, how much uptime I absolute, the system absolutely must have. And for that reason, in terms of applications, uh, uh, 911 seems like the big one. Right. So that's it. That's about the only thing you wouldn't. Uh... Yeah, but remember, there's there's much more to running an IT organization than applications, right? There's also infrastructure. There's your network. I mean, there's there's more than applications, but in terms of, of applications, the one that, that stands out in my mind um, that I can't have subject to an internet outage uh, is the 911 system. Um, just on the legislation that, that uh, Council Member Ballone has introduced, um, according to tech advocates, the last time there was a comprehensive data or computing systems audit was in 2001. Uh, obviously much has changed over the last 20 years in technology. What is do it doing to ensure that citywide systems are evaluated for modernization? Well, we're, we're doing the work of modernizing them. So for example, as platforms become end of life, we are identifying systems that run on those platforms and um, letting agencies know that they need to modernize and they can't uh, continue to run on end of life platforms. Um, Yosef, do you want to speak a little bit to, to that? Sure. So uh, we've we've promulgated policies and we've we've sent those policies out to, to agencies. Uh, essentially, if you're um, running on an operating system or an application that's no longer supported by the manufacturer, uh, do it is not going to support that much longer. Um, you need to move off of that platform. And very often, uh, to your point, sir, that is going to require an upgrade of the application. When you need to upgrade the application, we look at that and say, okay, do we want to keep this application on prem? Do we want to just perpetuate the current model or would we like to move this to the cloud uh, and, and you know, redo it in, uh, in alignment with our newer model? And it, but is it difficult to audit uh, computing systems? Um, it, it's, it's not difficult to, to audit the computing systems. The difficulty lies in what are you trying to find from the audit. So if you wanted to just get a sense of how many systems we have, what operating systems are running, that's not difficult. Um, you know, if you wanted to get uh, details on the application and how it works, that might be a little bit more difficult. So when, when can we see an updated audit <laughs> from Do It? Uh, it depends what you want the audit, uh, as, as Yosef said, it depends what you want the audit to show. If you want to see how many platform, uh, how many systems are running on a given platform, like I could turn that around for you really fast. If you want every city agency to document every single system it runs and answer detailed questions about it, you could be waiting a really long time. So uh, in doing the audit, would you have free reign to do the uh, audit uh, of agencies? Uh, I couldn't do the audit. Uh, I couldn't freely, I couldn't do the audit of every agency on my own. That's that's the point I was trying to make. Yeah, but- You really, uh, need, the, the, you really need the agencies that use the system in some cases 
have built the system, control the system, maintain the system, you really need to work hand in hand with doing them. Um, if it was just a question of um, systems that do it, builds and controls, um, that's easier. But again, you have the agencies that are actually using the system that you need to work with. All right. Um, any, any other questions uh, from council members? No, Chair, I don't see anyone else. Okay, I'm just gonna switch gears for a second, Commissioner, um, for a link NYC update. If uh, while I have you here. Um, uh, let me just uh, give you a little background here. In response to our follow-up letter, you wrote, quote, uh, since I appeared before you in March, City Bridge has worked to bring in a new strategic partner willing to make a capital infusion uh, in the program. We are working with City Bridge now to finalize the terms of an amendment to the franchise agreement designed to return the Link NYC program to a revenue generator for New York City. However, should this uh, progress stall, I stand ready to use the various tools at my disposal to ensure City Bridge either fulfills its contractual obligations or that the city collects the $100 million in security on the link program that we hold, unquote. Could you update on that, us uh, on, the, on the progress? Um, what's the date of that letter? That was, uh, I guess, March. It was um, June of this year. Yeah, March, March. Oh no, June, I'm sorry, June. So the letter was in June. June. I believe June 24th. Mm -hmm. That is still underway. I'm sorry, I missed that. That is still underway, and I look forward okay. to updating you soon um, when I have more information. Uh, how long is this going to go on? Um, they, you know, it, we have to decide on this. So we have to get to the bottom of it and make sure that they fulfill their uh, obligations. I couldn't agree more that um, this is an issue that um, we uh, need closure on. And what I can say is that our franchise team is uh, very focused on this and um, bringing forward a resolution that um, is going to work for the city. Okay, just on a, a final note, I want to thank you for the upgrade for 311 with We Can Send Photographs now on parking issues, violations, and others. It's uh, so great to do that. And I, I must say on my first try at it, I got a five minute response. I know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if that was a coincidence, but it was, uh, and, and I asked the police and they did get the photo. They did see the photo. So it's working commissioner. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the feedback. It was your idea um, to photo enable those service requests. Well, anytime you can provide evidence and show a particular problem, but I, I hope that expands to all the agencies and that we, uh, and that we, we can certainly um, get um, obviously some um, upgrades on 311. There's, a, there's still a lot to do uh, for you know, um, certain violations. It's hard to actually communicate on the app, but um, it's definitely a giant step forward, Commissioner. I wanna thank you for that. Um, and uh, what's that? Any any more count? Any council member question before we move on? No, no more questions. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Thanks to your team. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Have a good holiday. Great holiday. Thank you. The same to you. Okay. I also want to thank you all, and we will now turn to public testimony. I will be calling groups of panelists. Once your name is called to testify, our staff will unmute you and the surgeon at arm will set the timer to announce that you might begin. We ask each panelist to limit their testimony to five minutes. Council members will have an opportunity to ask questions after each panel of witnesses. 
I would like now to welcome our first panel to testify. And our first panel will be Amy Wagner, Treason Morel Lerset, and Brian Naples. Ms. Wagner, you might begin when Surgeon at Arm will set the clock. Time begins now. Thank you, Chairman Holden and members of the committee for hosting this hearing. I'm Amy Wagoner, Senior Director of State and Local Government Affairs for the Eastern Half of the US for Salesforce. Salesforce is a global leader in cloud enterprise software for customer relationship management, providing software as a service and platform as a service offerings to businesses, governments, and other organizations across the world. Our business model is subscription-based allowing for faster deployment of technologies and greater agility. We help our customers connect with their customers or their employees or citizens in a whole new way using cloud, social, and mobile technologies. Salesforce is committed to a set of core values of trust, customer success, innovation, and equality. Since we were founded, we have pioneered the one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one philanthropic model, and each year we commit to giving 1% of our employee time, 1% of our product, and 1% of our equity back to communities around the world. New York has been core to Salesforce's growth with a physical presence since 2006. Today, we have more than 1,500 employees in Salesforce Tower, New York, located right at the foot of Bryant Park. And we give every employee 56 hours of volunteer time off each year. And last year, our New York City employees volunteered over 35,000 hours in their communities. Salesforce serves our customers through what is known as a multi-tenant application architecture designed for security, efficiency, availability, and rapid innovation. Our multi-tenant architecture is analogous to that used to provide online banking, which can be accessed and used by thousands of users simultaneously through the logical, not physical, separation of data. With purpose-built industry functionality and all the capabilities of the Salesforce platform, government agencies can increase employee productivity, accelerate time to value, and deepen citizen trust with database decisions with every interaction. When it comes to privacy and security, at Salesforce, trust is our number one value. The protection of our customers' data is paramount, and we safeguard that data with a robust and comprehensive privacy and security program. To that end, we have undertaken significant efforts towards developing a privacy program that accounts for the ever-evolving landscape of global data protection laws. For example, Salesforce was among the first software companies to achieve approval for our processor binding corporate rules in November of 2015. Our government customers use our products to work with some of their most sensitive data, and we have undertaken significant steps to develop a comprehensive data protection and security program built on five principles that highlight our commitment and focus on trust. Those are customer control, security, transparency, compliance, and partnership. Salesforce's technical security measures include protections against system vulnerabilities, logical separation of customer data, robust network security, encryption of data in transmission, and options for encryption of data at rest. We build security into everything we do so that our customers know that their data is theirs to be accessed when, where, and how they intend. And lastly, utilizing Salesforce means that you can serve your citizens more effectively. Digital transformation promotes innovation, better service quality, and operational resilience. We believe responsible cloud outsourcing prevents a value or presents a valuable opportunity to deliver better outcomes for citizens in an all digital, work from anywhere environment. And the necessity for this has been amplified by the requirements for work continuity throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. With Salesforce, you can implement mission-ready technology with innovative cloud products created for government. And Salesforce's industry-leading offerings were designed to solve every need in the public sector with full regulatory compliance and robust security. Thank you again for your time today. Thank you very much, Ms. Wagner. And our next panelist is Treason Morel 
floor sand. Time starts now. Good afternoon, Chair Holder, uh, Chair Holden, and members of the committee. I am Tristan Moore Larset, a Senior Managing Director with Accenture, and I work within our firm's cloud practice. Accenture is a global professional services company with leading capabilities in digital, cloud, and security. We employ more than 5,000 New Yorkers, operate in more than 120 countries and 40 industries, including the government sector, and are op opening a flagship office at One Manhattan West this spring. I echo the points made by today's earlier presenters and will highlight additional benefits that cloud can yield. First, simply put, cloud can be a source of tremendous technical innovation. Cloud enables systems to grow with the changing demands of the city while also minimizing cost. It also allows for on-demand availability of services, as well as more agility and faster deployment of these services. Cloud saves entities a large amount of time that would otherwise be spent on procurement, capacity planning, and solicitation of traditional infrastructure resources, which ultimately allows faster delivery of value to all New York City's constituents. As an example, New York City has taken some important initial steps to harness the power of the cloud for its residents. We have been honored to partner with the city on some of, its, of these initiatives, including creating a mobile app to help residents apply for SNAP, and TANF benefits, as well as the Fair Affairs program. In short, cloud can enable, can enable interactive services for all constituents to align with their needs and which can be deployed with higher speed to respond to market events and changes such as COVID-19. For example, when the pandemic first began, our teams in Europe worked with the Madrid healthcare um, system to urgently set up and operationalize new emergency medical locations, such as fairgrounds, hotels, into that health network to be able to operate as the rest of that health care system. Additionally, a chatbot was deployed to aid with the triage of cases as the healthcare system was initially overwhelmed in its response to the higher number of COVID cases. These are the types of capabilities that cloud can bring to large cities and enable them to deliver better services to their constituents. Finally, cloud has been touted as the center of future innovation. And with this innovation will come the attraction of more high-end talent to the city. Cloud is not only attractive to top talent because of its pioneering virtues, but because it also uh, is, it is also able to remove the barriers that inhibit growth to make it simpler to handle IT resources and allow companies to develop faster as a result. This will be critical to the success of the city in the post-pandemic era, as New York City looks to propel itself into modern day technology and for new ways to manage its operation and growth. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our next panelist is Brian Naples. Time starts now. Good afternoon, Chair Holden and members of the committee. I'm Ryan Naples, Deputy Director of Tech NYC, an advocacy group for New York City's tech community representing more than 800 companies and organizations. COVID-19 has impacted New York in profound ways and will take years for the city to fully recover. The city has a $4 billion budget deficit for next year. Meanwhile, city services are now a matter of life and death for everyday New Yorkers. Better technology infrastructure would improve agency operations online, better secure data, and save the city money. This is ultimately why increasing usage of cloud computing is more important now than ever. Put simply, New York City government systems can be smarter, faster, more flexible, and cost less money by transferring data and technology needs to the cloud. The specific advantages of cloud computing for city government are many. First, this technology is designed so that the city pays only when it consumes, consumes computing resources. Second, the city can access as much or as little capacity as needed and scale up and down as required with only a few minutes notice. Most notably, the state's UI system's legacy infrastructure struggled to handle an unprecedented influx of COVID-related jobless claims this spring until they leveraged cloud technology to rapidly scale and process unemployment insurance claims at six times the rate and volume of after the 2008 financial crisis. Cloud computing capacity also exists without needing physical space from the user, while on-site legacy servers 
need a climate controlled city office all to themselves. The reduced rent and environmental benefits of cloud computing are huge benefits for the city. Meanwhile, cloud technology data storage is also more environmentally sustainable since cloud service companies invest in renewables, offsets, and greener infrastructure. In terms of resiliency, cloud services let clients recover more easily from unexpected or catastrophic events since they're built to bounce back faster than physically deployed single site data centers or server closets. For example, cloud technology built for the financial services industry ensures they can recover from disasters like massive citywide power outages, 100 year storms like Sandy or terrorist attacks. Most importantly, cloud services are more secure than on-premise legacy servers. Cloud services have newer security features built in that make security architecture changes much easier. Physical separation between servers and government offices would also lead to fewer cyber vulnerabilities. Because on-premises servers are usually located within or close to city agencies themselves, these IT network spaces are at high risk of physical access by unauthorized users. Importantly, this superior technology costs less than the legacy servers the city has built and maintains. Our members who provide cloud services report a 31% average cost savings to their customers compared to physical on-premises servers, as well as 62% more efficient IT infrastructure management. These numbers make sense for the city, especially right now. We recognize that for a government the size of New York's, any change is not an easy task. It is for this reason that Tech NYC strongly supports Council Member Valone's bill being discussed today that requires Do It perform a feasibility study of cloud technology conversion for all city data. We do, however, already believe that the time is now for New York City to begin adopting cloud computing for all city agencies at a much larger scale. Thank you for your time today, and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, panel, uh, the first panel here. Um, I just have a general question. What, you know, you, you heard the uh, commissioner of Do It, um, her testimony. Uh, anything that popped out from any of the panelists that you kind of disagree with? Um, that you'd like to comment on or that you uh, agree with? This is Tristan, I will, um, from, from Accenture. Um, I heard, what I heard is a common North Star of a desire to leverage the best capabilities for the city. And I think with that in mind, we're all generally in alignment, at least our point of view is that that is the right North Star. Um, understanding the complexities of getting there, establish that, establishing that North Star is pivotal. And uh, that's what I've heard from the testimony. Great. Any, anybody else? A any? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. Do you have something? I, was say, I think it was, I think it was really interesting. I think um, the, you know, the commissioner's support for this technology is really important. Um, and I think it's equally important that, you know, you all keep pushing because it seems a little unclear just like where the numbers stand and like how much data actually could be converted to the cloud. Because I feel like that was something that was, you asked probably multiple times and it wasn't, it wasn't exactly answered. Because like you're, I think, the, the purpose of the bill, right, is to kind of understand better what is the universe we're talking about in order to kind of like, okay, this is really what it looks like, what the reality is, and then now let's take steps to move what can be moved to the cloud. Um, it seems like it's a little bit uh, not totally defined, um, which could be, you know, it could be, there's a multiple, multiple reasons why that's the, the case, but a bill like, Councilman Valones, I think it'd be helpful there. Yeah, it doesn't sound like like the commissioner is, uh, is really supporting the bill. So um, that's, so we really, uh, we have to do some convincing, mm -hmm. um, but 
there needs to be, like you said, there needs to be some kind of audit. Um, and we need to, uh, we need, we need more information about these data centers too. We need the costs and so forth, which we didn't get yet. And we hopefully we'll get that from the commissioner. And I, I would say also, I think what's really interesting too is the, the piece about how, you know, the security piece of not just is, you know, the architecture and infrastructure better for, of cloud technology, but also just the safety of not having cloud, not having this technology so close to the actual offices because of like unauthorized access. I think that's like another important piece of this. I mean, can, can, can anybody on the panel talk about what cities are doing it right with the cloud? What cities have gone mostly to the cloud and are saving money uh, versus data centers? I mean, I know California, I know in Los, I believe Los Angeles has a success story and what they're, they're using their, um, they're using the cloud for um, their school, their, their entire city's school district is, um, infrastructure is now on the cloud in Los yeah, Angeles. We heard, we heard good things about that. Yes, we did yeah. uh, read about that. And uh, so maybe we can learn from them. That's why I always like to look at other cities or countries that they're what they're doing and then and and some of the pitfalls that they've gone through so it's it's a good uh, it's a good lesson anything else from any okay we can move on thank you panel thank you so much for your testimony right now i do not see any other questions from other council members and we're moving to our next panel and our next panel will be Matthew Cartelius, Professor Stephen Balavan, and Amid Gafari Tabrizi. Mr. Cartelius, you can begin when Sir Jendon Arm will let you know. Time starts now. Chairman Holden and distinguished members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify today on the benefits of cloud computing and how the New York City Council can leverage cloud and other emerging technologies to dramatically and securely modernize legacy systems and better deliver vital services and benefits to your constituents. My name is Matthew Cornelius and I'm the executive director of the Alliance for Digital Innovation. We're a nonprofit organization made up of over two dozen of America's most innovative commercial technology companies. Which focuses, on a, which focuses on empowering public sector agencies at all levels of government to better deliver the effective digital experiences that citizens deserve and taxpayers demand. We believe that the continuing reliance on outdated, insecure legacy technology fundamentally obstructs the creation of a modern, secure digital government. This hearing is a great opportunity to spotlight the important, this important issue and discuss the opportunities that cloud computing and other new technologies can unleash for the city of New York. Below, I'll share a perspective on both the IT challenges and opportunities public sector agencies face, and we'll offer some recommendations to improve the speed, scale, and likelihood of success in modernizing the city's legacy technology. For starters, cloud-based technologies have a number of unique characteristics that can benefit the city of New York, including the ability to buy and leverage IT resources immediately and virtually without limitation, a business model that enables just-in-time IT deployments, allowing government agencies to consume IT on an as needed basis without having to invest the enormous capital resources necessary to support surge driven requirements, enhance security and privacy, especially regarding the confidentiality, integrity and availability of public data sets and enabling a raft of new capabilities such as artificial intelligence, DevOps and agile development that will streamline and modernize large IT development projects. Up until February of this year, these points, incredibly valid in their own right, were too often just hypotheticals to even the most insightful forward-leaning public sector leaders. However, the past 10 months of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic has forced government agencies at the federal, state, and local levels to accelerate their modernization efforts through the embrace of commercial cloud and other emerging technologies, to keep schools functioning, to keep citizens informed, to deliver vital government services and benefits in a new digital first format, and to ensure the continuity of agency operations during a time of maximum remote telework. Even today, our conversation is made possible by commercial video conferencing equipment, 
without which this hearing and so many other necessary functions for New York City would be severely truncated or aborted. Other less dramatic but equally important changes in government operations have led cities, states, and even entire federal departments to leverage cloud computing to meet their mission. For instance, tightening budgets and cost pressures have pushed numerous agencies to overhaul the antiquated mindset that an organization must own and secure its own data center infrastructure. The pace of innovation in the commercial market, where citizens can handle most of their day-to-day -day needs from their mobile phone, have led, have led them to demand the same quality and ease of service from government programs. And the ever-evolving threats to public sector agency IT systems have encouraged government leaders to partner with commercial cloud companies and rely upon enormous investments in security these firms make to ensure their customers' data and information is appropriately protected from malicious actors. For these reasons and so many more, there is both a common sense and dollars and cents mandate for government agencies to accelerate their adoption of cloud computing and other emerging technologies. ADI commends the Committee on Technology for introducing and considering the local law in relation to an assessment on the feasibility for storing city agencies' electronic data on cloud computing systems. To help improve the scope and impact of the assessment, we encourage the city to continue. We, uh, we encourage the committee to ensure the study includes some additional items that were already well articulated in the draft bill. The potential costs and benefits, including on the city's budget, planning, and execution of adopting cloud's unique consumption based pricing model. The potential benefits for interagency collaboration, including sharing data and project management across city agencies. The potential benefits of accelerating speed to market and defined service levels, enabling the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications to dynamically scale quality services up and down based on business demand. The potential benefits to workforce performance and morale through the adoption and use of modern commercial technologies, and the potential benefits to New York City's cybersecurity posture and readiness. In addition to these particular recommendations, we strongly encourage the committee to consider further engagement opportunities and original research that can inform their views on cloud computing. To conclude, IT modernization and leveraging cloud computing are vital not only because it saves money and enhances the effectiveness of agency operations, it is the primary, is the primary catalyst for increasing public confidence in the ability of government agencies to competently and, co and capably deliver important services to constituents. Thank you very much for your time today, and I look forward to your continued engagement with the committee and your important technology efforts as they move forward. Thank you very much for your testimony, Mr. Cornelius. And our next panelist is Professor Balvin. Professor Balvin, you might begin when the surgeon at ARM will let you know. Time starts now. Thank you, thank you, Chair Holden, for uh, having me speak here. I I'm a professor of computer science at Columbia University affiliate law faculty. I stress that I'm speaking only for myself. For more than 30 years, security and privacy have been uh, my major research and professional interests, both at the university and before that when I was at AT&T AT Labs and Bell Labs Research. And we're speaking mostly about, about the technology. I was delighted to hear from Commissioner Tish that the city is moving towards uh, cloud technology. I want to distinguish between three different aspects. This cloud computing, we basically just renting computer cycles, CPU cycles for our provider. Cloud storage, we are renting disk space. And cloud applications, which are the enhanced services that all of the cloud providers offer. Uh, cloud storage and cloud computing are difficult to disentangle. If you only store your data in the cloud, you're going to slow down some applications because of you know, the speed of light is too slow to receive, retrieve data rapidly to a computer in a city from a data center that might be say, uh, Northern Virginia where AWS has one, uh, one of its large data centers. So you really need to group them together. There's also the charges for network traffic outside of their uh, premises, which can also be considerable. But it's cloud applications that make life really, really interesting. The enhanced services available by all cloud providers, for example, artificial intelligence platforms, facial recognition, databases, far more, stuff that's possible but difficult to replicate on your own, even for a organization as large as New York City, even if it was just one IT operation rather than many different agencies. Now, when it comes to security, if you're only getting CPU cycles, you get only minor security advantages. Uh, 
you could do things in a more agile fashion, but basically you're still running the same computers. If you take an application, do what's called lift and shift, just move it to cloud computers, you are going to save little of any money and little of any improvement in security. But when you start using these cloud native applications, these enhanced applications, you're getting tremendous benefits of the economy of scale that the big cloud providers are, uh, can offer. They know how to run machines at scale at essentially zero marginal cost for each additional computer because that's, you know, that's their business is doing it at scale. They're also about the best in the business at security. When they are securing their applications, they are doing it better than more or less anybody else can. That is their business. You get a considerable increase in security by using, uh, using their services. Uh, yeah, there's in some sense, some risk of outage, but they're also really good at reliability. That is again, their business. You can get outages with your own services. 19, early 1999, there was a failure of the city's 911 system, a combination of a hardware failure and improvident design of how to do a test, testing a generator while the battery backup was offline. Uh, in 2011, the 911 system in the city was overloaded uh, following a large storm. You need more reliability and you can get this through cloud services. Quite apart from the agility of being able to spin up more services when you need them, which has been mentioned by others. Uh, so I, you know, I am a very much a fan of moving stuff to the cloud, but it does have to be done carefully. Lift and shift, as I said, is not going to save anybody any noticeable amount of money. I would suggest doing trial migrations of existing applications, not uh, just migrating them to a cloud server, but re-architecting them, learn what it's going to cost. It will not be free. It will not, it may not even be cheap, but let's learn. It is a direction we need to be going, but it does need to be done in a cloud native fashion. And uh, you know, I think it'll be useful to do. Given the changes necessary to do its operations, it might also be wise to have external advisors, people from some of the large companies in the city that are customers that cloud providers aiding in the evaluation of this transition. Again, I'm happy to answer any further questions and I thank you for having me. Thank you, Professor, for your testimony. Our next panelist is Amit Ghaffari Tabrizi. Mr. Ghaffari Tabrizi, you might begin with when Surgeon at Arm will let you know. Time starts now. Thank you to Chair Holden, the Honorable Members of the Committee on Technology, and the IT support staff of the New York City Council for allowing me to participate in this hearing via cloud-based video conference tool. My name is Omi Kafari Tabrizi, and I am the Internet Association's Director of Cloud Policy. IA represents over 40 of the world's leading internet companies and supports policies that promote and enable a free and open internet. Our companies are also global leaders in the drive to develop lower cost, more secure, scalable, elastic, efficient, resilient, and innovative cloud services for users and customers in the private and public sector. In fact, all of the major US-based hyperscale cloud computing service providers are IA members. Commercial cloud adoption is a necessary component of any modernization effort. It provides enhanced security, it helps reduce procurement costs, and it helps improve the effectiveness and most importantly, morale of the workforce. IA members know this because in their collective experience with governments of all sizes, they've been responsible for maintaining and securing data of all types and levels of sensitivity from publicly available data sets to the most sensitive national security intelligence artifacts. All of our members invest a tremendous amount of energy, effort, and expense in security and compliance. Adopting commercial cloud-based computing would allow the city to take advantage of this investment for themselves. Most relevant to the city is the way in which commercial cloud-based computing service providers have invested in physical and cybersecurity. In terms of physical security, the buildings where our members have the computing devices they use to store public sector data are, if you will allow the expression, more secure than Fort Knox. IA members have data centers that use the most advanced biometric technology simply to grant entry into a facility, and this is only after passing some of the most rigorous of background checks. For those moments outside of the control of people, these data centers are also designed to withstand the most severe weather and most intense natural disasters. 
if you were able to enter into one of these data centers and see under the hood at how the computers themselves operate, you would find tools using emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning to provide both offensive and defensive cybersecurity resilience. Spotting abnormalities in network activity or providing the ability to immediately load backups should the worst occur will ensure that users of cloud computing services will experience uninterrupted delivery of essential services. Confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of data is what makes for a secure cloud and is one of the key benefits of commercial cloud service providers. One of the other benefits of commercial cloud computing is that it enables on-demand access to shared computing resources. As I alluded to at the very beginning when I pointed out the fact that my participation in this hearing is made possible as a result of a cloud-based video conferencing tool, we are using an application that uses only the computing resources necessary to support the audience present. If we're using a video conferencing tool that was hosted on city-owned computing devices, the number of computers that the city would have to own and maintain would have to be equal to the number necessary to support the maximum participants the city expects. This means that every single committee hearing where no one shows up would cost the city just as much as a hearing where 10,000 people show up because that is the maximum number of participants the city owned data center in our hypothetical example is designed to support. Expanding on that idea, everyone knows that certain city services will always experience ebbs and flows. Schools.nyc.gov, for example, require a lot more computing power to support parents, students, and teachers looking for information when schools reopen in the middle of the summer. If the Department of Education hosts applications on city-owned computing devices, the programs using those applications will have to find a budget to pay for their upkeep year-round, whether there are thousands of visitors or just one. Using commercial cloud-based solutions, on the other hand, would allow the city to adopt a pay-as-you-go form of IT budgeting, ensuring the only computing services being paid for and maintained are those the city is actually using. Another benefit of using this consumption-based computing services is that it allows city employees and contractors who work with them to quickly develop a proof of concept or prototype for internal and public-facing applications, and when they are found to be successful, quickly scale them up for use. By providing access to advanced capabilities that are constantly being updated or rolled out by commercial cloud service providers, paper-based forms and processes can be converted to digital ones, and the data collected can be used to make better decisions. For example, an employee can quickly deploy a robotic process automation bot using a no-code or low-code tool, meaning they simply write out instructions with no need for programming knowledge, to process applications for benefits. If an application for housing in a homeless shelter during the winter months or one for legal assistance in the event of an eviction is currently paper-based or depending on applications running on antiquated hardware, there's a very real chance that additional services that would benefit this particular resident were unaware that that person qualified. This is a situation that never has to happen again if cloud-based, cloud-native, data-driven decision-making is enabled. To that point, uh, a team operating one of the more heavily trafficked local call centers can take all the questions and answers and put them in an AI, ch chat, AI chatbot that will allow for mobile-friendly delivery of personalized customer service at any hour of the day, any day of the week. Hi. Thank you again for your time, and I look forward to following up with you as this bill progresses, especially with the amendments that we proposed. Thank you very much for your testimony. I now turn over to the chair for questions. Thank you all for your great testimony. Very enlightening. Um, did uh, I'll ask the same question I asked the previous panel. Did you get a sense um, from the uh, commissioner's testimony that we're headed in the right direction? I was glad to hear that the city is moving to cloud applications, especially for anything newer. Uh, you know, I, I think that we need to look more closely at how much more we can move to the cloud and how rapidly. And I did, did not perceive that that was being done that rapidly, but you know, I, I, I don't have direct visibility into the operations of doing. I'm glad that they are moving in that direction. I would like them to move faster. I would agree that the general tone was positive um, and that there was a, a a general agreement with the idea of adopting cloud-based uh, services to be something positive and beneficial. But um, as I think, uh, as we indicated in some of the red lines that we submitted with our testimony, uh, there, there was a little bit of uh, potential opportunity for actually analyzing the return that would come from using these cloud-native applications. There is absolutely an investment required to migrate to the cloud, but once you have actually moved your services into those cloud native applications as the professor was mentioning rather than a lift and shift there are some benefits that you simply won't be able to get from an on-premises solution All right um how are we how's new york city doing relative to other cities anybody have 
something to offer there? No. Okay. Um, I would say this much. It is very positive that you at least are considering a bill like this. There, there are very many examples of large cities that could use something like this. So if yeah. nothing else, it is very positive that at least you have uh, more than just your department of IT and some of the technical focused folks looking at this issue. So we're, we're gonna share, cause I, we didn't get some of the answers on the cost of these data cent New York City data centers, um, which I think is a very, very important discussion. Um, obviously with the budget, you know, the serious budget situation we're in in New York City, uh, that we need to get those numbers. So once uh, we'll put it on our social media and the, and the council, we have a technology page um, that will um, update you, everyone here, um, because it is a, a, a very important discussion and we need some kind of schedule to how the city is going to save money going forward with the cloud versus the data centers and you know, are we, you know, we should actually do a, we talked about an audit today. There's gotta be a serious audit uh, of these city agencies and how they're doing business and what, what they could do better. But, um, you know, we have, I'm, I'm holding your testimony here and, and I really, I'm just reading it as I'm, as I'm um, talking to you. Um, it's very interesting. We need to consult with you in the future. I think the committee will be contacting you, you all because uh, your wonderful testimony um, thank you, Professor Tu, for your, your testimony and, and suggestions. Um, this is a, a, a tremendous service you've done for New York City uh, in being on this uh, hearing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I do not see any other council members wishing to ask questions. I want to thank you all for your testimony. Chair, do you have any final questions to the panel? Okay, well, uh, no questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you everyone who testified and uh, gave uh, testimony. Uh, uh, and I wanna thank the staff uh, uh, from the speaker's office who organized the hearing and uh, thank you Sergeant at Arms for, for their work uh, in ensuring uh, a smooth hearing. And uh, again, I wanna thank um, the committee staff. Irene, I wanna thank you personally, Bahofsky, who uh, did a tremendous amount of work on this. Uh, Charles and uh, Florentine, thank you so much. Thank you all. And thanks to my staff. Thanks everybody who testified and we just, are- Just oh. because we closed, I apologize. Just because we closed, I wanna make sure that we haven't missed anyone. And if there is any witnesses that registered to testify today and has yet to be called, please raise use your Zoom raised hand function and I will call on you. As of right now, I do not see anyone and I just want to thank you all and for your testimony and turn back to the chair. Thank you, Irene. So uh, seeing, seeing no questions, uh, again, I just wanna say thank you everyone and happy holidays. <laughs> this hearing is closed. <laughs>